This is our inaugural Parent Power webinar. It's live, so please do bear with us if we have any future technical hitches, we will attempt to resolve them. If you have any questions during the evening, you can click on the QA button and type them in. Rachel Harding, one of our assistant head teachers, is monitoring this and will either type a response back to you or we'll answer them collectively at the end of the webinar. For those who, of you who don't know me, my name is Sarah Chesworth and I am the deputy head teacher for the Learning Trust. My role is to continually improve the quality of education provided across our three schools using the most up-to-date educational research as the foundation. We want the best for all of our students and by working in partnership with you and embracing the power of parents, we believe we can successfully enrich your child's journey through Christleton High School. International research tells us that simply talking to and asking your child how their school day was and showing genuine interest in their learning can have the same impact as hours of private tutoring, which is good for us to know for our bank balances. Professor John Hattie of Auckland University, New Zealand, conducted a 15-year analysis of 50,000 studies involving 83 million students to see what worked in education. He found a combination of parental encouragement and high parental expectations were critical, and that the effect of parent engagement over a student's school career amounted to adding an extra two to three years education to the student. Parent engagement, you might be relieved to hear, does not mean being an expert in subject areas like history or maths, but does include setting goals, displaying enthusiasm for learning, encouraging good study habits, valuing inquiry, experimentation, and learning new things, and sharing the enjoyment of reading. Handily for you, you don't need to read all this research yourself, unless like me, you find it fascinating as I have summarised the ideas onto one page of A4, which we will send out to you following this webinar. I do have children myself, and I'm familiar with the issue of asking about what they have learned and being told, I can't remember. To support you with this, the school has produced a curriculum booklet, which was handed out during period four today. So please check school bags for this. It summarises what is being taught in each subject area over the academic year as well as towards the back of the booklet, how will we will report on progress to you. Please don't worry if you lose this version as there is a copy on the website. We have plans to run more power sessions with top tips over the year to include topics such as how students learn, memory strategies, and what the school reports mean. If you have any areas you would like covering, please let us know in the feedback to this webinar. This evening, I am joined by a number of staff to give you some initial ideas on how you can support your child's development at home. Firstly, I would like to introduce Steph Blackwell to tell you about her role at the school and how the pastoral teams help students be ready to learn. Over to you, Steph. Hi, Sarah. OK, thank you for that. And hello, everybody. Thank you for everyone who joined, who's joined us this evening. Um, as um, Sarah just said, I am the head of year eight at the moment, and I'm just going to introduce a little bit about our pastoral system. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you now, as I'm sure you've seen many a time um, <laughs> over your lockdown uh, meetings that many of you have had. So how do we support students to be ready for learning? Well, everything that we do from our curriculum to our pastoral support system is underpinned by the five C's of Christian High School. And together, we strive to work with parents at home to create this perfect caring support pa package where we are committed to creating this collaborative um, package of support for all of our students to make sure that they are at the centre of everything that we do and that they are ready to learn and ready to be the best they possibly can be every day. And of course, we do it every day with a cheerful smile on our faces. Um, we do collaborate across the school and with home to make sure that we do that. And that's the whole point of this evening is to engage your parents and to give you that power to work with us to make the best opportunities for all. Um, as you can see from the booklet, you see that form time begins every single day and it sets the foundations for the learning every single morning. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that for you now. Many of you will already know your um, children's form tutors and obviously I'm talking to the, the parents of both year seven and year eight so I'm going to display the two teams on the on the screen at various points um, and just talk through a little bit how both year seven and year eight and all of our actual tutor teams support our students 
The role of the tutor in our school is a crucial role as they are both the students and the parents first port of call. So like I say, I am sure many of you have already met and spoken to your child's form tutor. They are the face that our students see every day and they are that one constant that they will have on every step of their learning journey. And that's because our form tutors take our students right the way from year seven through to year 11. And I'm sure again, as our year eight parents will know, these are familiar names that you would have already seen from last year um, that have taken our year eight um, team through too. Tutors are not just about checking equipment, attendance and lesson monitor. That's not the sole purpose for our mornings at all. Tutors act as mentors, both academically and pastorally, and ultimately they advocate for every student in their form group. I was really lucky enough to be the head of year 11 for the past few years and quite a few times at the end the students have come to me and said one of the things they're going to miss the most is they're going to miss their form group and they refer to it as their family and one student last year said that exactly to me she said miss she's like my school mum and everyone around me my brothers and sisters what am I going to do without them and I thought that really summed up that support network that was created by one of our incredible form tutors and all the students in that form. So as I say, they are uniquely placed to be able to understand and get to know our students incredibly well from year seven right the way through to 11. And the start of this relationship is those 20 minutes in the morning and our form time programme. As you can see, there are 12 broad areas that are covered across in form times across the year where tutors deliver and facilitate discussion support around all of the topics here. And I see that in your booklets, it kind of has a vague overview of what we cover in form time, but hopefully this will show you that there is so much more to it. Each and every one of these 12 areas is just as vital as the other, from addressing attendance and behaviour, to helping um, with study skills and knowing how to revise and how to study, to creating students that are capable to confidently and appropriately to tackle difficult discussion topics, both in form time and beyond, that, uh, beyond the form time as well. Our tutors are pivotal in creating the well-rounded Quisitan student, a student that not only goes on to achieve incredible academic success, but ultimately becomes the best version of themselves. Overseeing all of our um, tutors is our head of year, and these are all of our lovely faces. Um, so Miss Monaghan isn't with us this evening, and obviously I'm speaking on behalf of the two of us. Um, Mrs Monaghan is our permanent head of year seven, so she always does transition, taking all of our students from primary through to secondary, creating this really bespoke personal package to make sure that our students are ready to move from primary up to secondary. And I think she's done an incredible job um, considering all things COVID over the past couple of years, as I'm sure you will agree. The rest of us, 8, 9, 10 and 11, we cycle. So I will take year eight now right the way through to year 11. And that gives us the opportunity to have that one head a year taking them right the way through their learning journey. And we are all experts in all those areas. So whether it's talking about GCSE options, starting points in year eight or transitioning into key stage five, once you get beyond year 11, each one of us is able to take our students confidently through those processes. Then once you get to the end of year 11, if and hopefully if our students choose to stay with us, they hand it over to our year, to our year 12 and 13 tutors and the sixth form team are able to take them through the final stages of their journey with us. Um, the heads of year do oversee the pastoral support system for their year group and they work with the students to create a strong bond between school and home. Um, we're all obviously incredibly supportive and caring and always strive to think about new creative ways to support our entire year group. And ultimately that comes to this idea here, we work together. As parents, your first port of call is your form tutor, but the head of year is always there as well to be on hand to oversee any concerns or issues in the year group. And it's by working together and clearly communicating that we will ensure the best for all of our students. But tonight is not just all about our, our phenomenal pastoral support team. It's obviously about how to support development across the curriculum for all of our students. And I'm really excited that you're going to hear from a good range of people this evening. So I'm just going to stop sharing this screen now. Um, so that I can just bring it back to the main one. Um, so you, tonight you're going to hear from our literacy coordinator, our numeracy coordinator and our career support leader. And first of all, I'm going to hand you over to Alan Gresty as our literacy coordinator and over to his exciting presentation. Alan. Thank you very much, Steph. Um, and thank you for your introduction. And this slide, teaching is listening, learning is talking. So it really hits uh, home what we aim to do. Um, with year seven, year eight, let's just say. And as I said, it's not a bolt on. Literacy is central to everything we do, not just within the classroom, but throughout school, at home and in supporting our children's future. The first thing a child learns to do is to communicate, which leads on to speech, talking, listening, and et cetera. 
And we feel that speaking and listening forms the most used and most important skills that every child will develop. It is key to closing gaps and improving social mobility. So we really feel strongly at Crystalton, and we trust that you do as well, that we must enable and equip our learners, whatever their background, to become confident communicators, global citizens that are prepared for the world of work. Ultimately, our aim is to empower students to be confident speakers and listeners who can articulate their thoughts and feelings in a purposeful way. And our literacy program at year seven and eight is all about embedding these skills that can connect success across the curriculum. By empowering every student to express themselves, to communicate clearly, creatively, and in an organized and coherent way, we can impact directly on their confidence and their self-esteem and providing them with some of the thinking tools that they need to succeed. So here are some of the topics that year seven um, were, were covered in, uh, years in literacy and the current year seven will obviously be continuing them this year. Um, so some of them there you can see on the, on the, on the screen um, is pretty much explained. Our aim for this unit is Your Voice Matters and it is reinforcing what we just talked about in shaping an individual to be coherent, to, to be expressing themselves and be confident um, throughout all their subjects. So, um, you know, some of those topics are listed about what it means to be a good speaker. Some people seem to think it's just how loud you talk, um, but a speaker is actually somebody who is very attentive and responds effectively, uh, not just speaking. Talking about fact and opinion, and ultimately the, the art of crafting a speech and conveying their point of view. You can see that last year um, we have these uh, our winners from last year's year seven, uh, Your Voice Matters. And these students were so outstanding. Not only did they persevere through a tough uh, last year, but they, they crafted and performed in front of their year group two outstanding speeches. And there they are with Mr. Jones, face masks and all. Um, so it's worth noting that um, these activities and these lessons are mainly uh, pens down activities um, ultimately, they will, at the end of the year, craft a mini speech themselves, but the real focus is ensuring that these skills have, uh, or these students have the skills in debating, um, putting forward their ideas, and really increasing their confidence. One of the activities that uh, Year 7 complete in their, um, their literacy lessons is this one, and it's focusing on active listening. And we really wanted to get to the heart of what it means to listen effectively. So this clip is from uh, the movie Inside Out. And as we watch it, I just want you to consider, and you can post some ideas uh, and your answers in the chat function, but we'll look over them. Just think about in the clip, um, what joy the, the character with blue hair does. What does she do right? What does she do wrong? Um, does the character who represents sadness, I'm sure you'll identify her if you know the film well, um, she comes in and takes over the conversation. So think about what she does differently. And thinking about this one in red for our parents at home, just consider the importance of asking questions, not just for the students in school, but when they're at home and thinking about the possible effects on teaching empathy. So we're just gonna watch this little clip in which Bongo, the elephant, is experiencing a hard time. I'm just going to share um, my clip. So hopefully you can see this video clip and uh, we'll think of some ideas as we watch. No! No, 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 you can't take my rocket to the top! Riley and I go to the moon! Riley can't be done with me. Hey, it's gonna be okay. We can fix this. We just need to get back to headquarters. Which way to the train station? I had a whole trip planned for us. <gasps> hey, who's ticklish, huh? Here comes the tickle monster. Hey, Bing Bong, look at this. <laughs> Oh, here's a fun game. You point to the train station and we all go there. Won't that be fun? Come on, let's go to the train station. I'm sorry they took your rocket. They took something that you loved. You 
it's gone. Forever. Sadness. Don't make him feel worse. Sorry. It's all I had left of Riley. I bet you and Riley had great adventures. Oh, they were wonderful. Once we flew back in time, we had breakfast twice that day. Sadness! It sounds amazing. I bet Riley liked it. Oh, she did. We were best friends. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I'm okay now. Come on, the train station is this way. Okay, hopefully that uh, video worked for you and you're able to consider some ideas as, as you watched it. Um, again, that is an activity, an example of whereby students will be presented with something interactive and they're asked to really evaluate and pick apart what actually happened, what, what um, active listening strategies did Sadness, the second character, uh, display in talking to Bongo. Um, so that, that was just one activity. And if you had any ideas or thoughts watching that about how effective as a listener Sadness was, that would be much appreciated. Now, I'm just gonna speak briefly about year eight. Um, year eight is building on the skills taught upon in year seven, but really rather than a individual speech and the students at the end um, competing uh, in their year group, it's all about um, wanting to be part of a group and essentially collaborate. So in year, year eight, uh, it's called Speak Up and Speak Out, the unit they will do once a fortnight. And we really want to be uh, able to uh, differentiate and allow students to differentiate between debate and argument, as well as understand the techniques of persuasion. Uh, during the year, students will be given the opportunity to organize and run debates in their class, engage in a topic of environmental debate, and learn how to assess fake news. Um, essentially, they're becoming de detectives on how to judge uh, sources of information and the effects of photoshopping and disinformation as well. Um, and some of the topic areas that uh, they cover um, are there's one topic, as I said, on fake news. So here's an example of, of some uh, headlines, and perhaps you could post in the chat which ones you think are true. Uh, a teenager on trial after refusing to pay a fine for feeding a chip to a pigeon. Mysterious seven foot creature spotted in Argentina. Is that fake or real? I think. Police in Germany rescue a man chased by a baby squirrel. A Canadian zoo fined after taking bear out, of, out for ice cream. Sounds like a good date. Teenager on trial after refusing to pay a fine for uh, feeding a chipper a pigeon. Uh, that was real, surprisingly. A mysterious seven foot creature spotted in Argentina, fake or real? Fake. And police in Germany rescue man chased by a baby squirrel. Do you think that's fake or real? If you said real, you were correct. Canadian Zoo find after taking the bear out for ice cream is real. I'm quite happy with that. So essentially, year eight is that building upon year seven's uh, individual speaking skills, but collaborating, ensuring that you work part of a team. And there's an opportunity for the Rotary Club and Youth Speak to come in, and they will be coming in November this year to work with a select um, group of students to really ensure that by the end of the year, they are developing uh, to be confident debaters. So finally, um, just want to leave you some final thoughts before I pass my uh, pass yourselves on to Ellie, the or so the numeracy coordinator. Um, we learn ten percent of what we read, twenty percent of what we hear, we learn, thirty percent of what we see, we learn, fifty percent of what we both hear and see, seventy percent of what is discussed. 80% of what we experience personally and 95% of what we learn is what we teach to someone else. And some quotations there, if you want to just have a little look of them, uh, your ability to communicate with others will account for full, will fully account for uh, the, the fully present is 85%, it should say, of your success in business and your life. 
the ability to communicate. Everyone has the right uh, to freedom of opinion and expression, and this includes to hold opinions, uh, regardless of frontiers. So thank you, and apologies for the glitches at the start. <laughs> thank you for your attention and your contributions. Um, student progress wouldn't happen without your support, and we look forward to working with you all in developing and improving the literacy for all of our learners at Christleton High School. Thank you very much, Alan, for that. That was a really inspiring presentation and lots of um, interactive to it as well. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to go from literacy to numeracy and we're going to hand over to Ellie Davis, our numeracy coordinator. So Ellie, over to you. Thanks, Seth. Um, OK, so I'm just going to quickly um, share my screen and hopefully you can hear me and you can see everything fine. Um, so I'm going to start this up with just a quick little question of um, and I just want you to think about it, really, is what is numeracy to you? Um, and it's, it's actually a question that we get um, we get told or well, asked by the students so often, what actually is numeracy? Isn't numeracy just maths? And that is the probably the most annoying but common response we always get all the time. Um, and actually, hopefully, what you're thinking now um, with numeracy, what numeracy would be to you, is you're not actually thinking, well, it's just maths. Um, because <laughs> really commonly, when have you done factorising since coming out of school? Probably not many of you have actually used that skill at all, even though all of you would have been taught it. Um, and that's because that is maths. Maths will open up doors for you to take further. Whereas numeracy, numeracy is very much of a case of it takes you, um, it takes some basic concepts of maths and it shares them into um, what you will see on a day-to-day -day basis. So a lot of you would have done maths at some point today. You might not have realized it, you might not have really thought about it, but you would have done some form of maths and that maths is the numeracy. Um, so the actual definition of numeracy is this ability to reason and to apply simple numerical concepts. Um, so it's, it's taking the really basic fundamental foundations of math. So you're, um, you're multiplying, you're dividing, you're adding, you're subtracting, all of those and applying those to um, different scenarios that you are going to see on um, a day to day basis. Um, so we have a look at what numeracy is and how it actually breaks into um, these six categories. Um, so the main one being this idea of using that measurement. Um, so we'll see it so often with uh, recipes all the time. Anytime you come to cook or bake, you will have to measure out something. So whatever ingredient. Um, but it can also be a case of you'll need to be able to make sure that you can measure um, if you are trying to get a new carpet, making sure that your room um, is big enough or the idea of um, measuring your wall to make sure you need enough wallpaper um, or even just getting a new turf or whatever. There's so many things that you can measure or even measuring your curtains, making sure that the drop is enough for you to cover that entire window. And then that ability will, if you're measuring in your centimeters, but um, all of the measurements in the shop on the thing that you are buying is all in millimeters, being able to change between um, them two metric measures is really, really important. And it's stuff that a lot of you will just do generally and without even thinking. Um, but there are some students that really struggle with that. So it's giving them that ability to go that bit further. And then obviously for our more able students who have already got these foundations really quite clear is making sure that they can apply it even further. So taking it down more of a route. Um, also, again, time, biggest measurement, um, making sure that your, your time management is such an important one and being able to keep to that is really, really important. Uh, now, over the past year and a half, we have been given so much statistical information on COVID. It's actually been unbelievable how much we've given. Um, and being able to interpret that so we don't take it the wrong way of whatever is being presented to us um, is a really important skill. A lot of jobs will contain some form of statistical information. So having that idea of how to read um, a chart, how to read a bar uh, model or how to read um, a line graph, scatter graph, whatever, being able to interpret all of that data um, and uh, do some statistical um, analysis on that afterwards is really, really important. Um, this one links really into that measuring, that idea of um, your plans, um, measuring anything. Um, it really comes into um, 
a lot of things and it can come out into niche um, types of jobs. Um, but if you've got plans or elevations or anything like that for um, drawings within DT, um, it becomes really important. Um, fractions, decimals, percentages, ratios and rates. That is, um, is very, very common. You'll see it all of the time. Um, just exchange rates, really important. If you're going away, understanding what that means, making sure that you've got enough money um, to go somewhere else. Um, and then percentages, percentages come up into everything. Financial mass um, comes in within the numeracy um, a lot. Um, the idea of whether the sale price is um, better, um, comparing different sale prices, um, even mortgages, all of that type of thing. Now, obviously, year seven and year eight will not be thinking of mortgages at this point, but that ability to use them percentages and understand what a percentage is um, and taking that a little bit further. Um, then we've got this estimating um, and calculating with whole numbers. So again, it's the money. And hopefully you've seen from just them things, these key things coming in all the time that you will use so often without even realizing. Um, now, this is our numeracy board in our maths department. So every single uh, student will walk past this uh, board when they're leaving maths or come in to maths. Um, so it's always there for them to have a look at. Um, and it just shows that numeracy is not just in, um, it's not just a math lesson, it's not just in math. Numeracy comes into so many different subjects. Um, so then a couple of things about the spatial reasoning. We will see that a lot in art, the ideas of their plans and designs that they would have to do um, within their design technology or within their art project. Um, they'll need to be able to draw that and draw that accurately with their measurements. Um, then you've got this idea of symmetry, for their photography. Um, there's, again, the cooking, the measuring, really important. Science and geography, um, all showing really key things. Um, scale drawings, uh, scaling on maps, so being able to read a map. Um, there's so many different things that we will pick up throughout the entirety of the numeracy scheme of work um, and allow them to see where the maths comes into loads of different subjects. So it's that ability to change their conception of what maths is and apply it to so many different other subjects. Um, so just to finish it off here, this is what the uh, scheme of work looks like for both year seven and year eight, and just shows you the different topics that we will take on. Um, we will constantly always put links within the different subjects so they can see exactly where they will see all of this numeracy um, coming into all their different subjects. Um, and where this all applies to the real world and how they can take um, what they learn within their numeracy lesson and use it at home um, with you guys. And it was really nice to see the, your poll being so, um, so positive and you're already doing such a good thing um, already, which is absolutely excellent. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope it's been informative and I'll hand you back over to um, Steph. Uh, thank you so much for that, Ellie. That was really interesting and definitely a reminder of all the things and numeracy that I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to Lindsay Lawson, who's our career support leader, and she's going to take you through our exciting careers programme at Chris Sutton. So over to you, Lindsay. Uh, thank you very much for that, Miss Blackwell. Um, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I'm part of the career support team at Criston High School and we've been working really hard over the last few months to try and implement a new careers programme for all pupils in the school. We've been really good previously at kind of focusing on key stage uh, four and five and we've used a resource called Uni, excuse me, Unifrog extensively at key stage five previously. Um, but after reviewing kind of what it can offer students, it was really clear that we could bring it further down the school. So what we chose to do is implement it with our year sevens and uh, year eights. Now, um, they've got different focuses depending on what the year group's going through. So, for example, year nines are doing their options. So a lot of their Unifrog programme will be um, catered towards making their options choices. So year seven are just sort of using this year to focus on learning what Unifrog is about and what it can offer and year eight are focusing on what success means to them. So, you know, it's all the idea that when they come to make applications, it can um, show them the things that they could put down, the successes that they can then talk about in interviews and areas like that. 
Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, what Unifrog is like so that you can use it at home uh, with your child. Um, every child has got a Unifrog login. Now, we are working our way through a rotor. We've set it up so that if each year group works on a sort of eight to 10 week rotor. And what happens is they get a week block in an ICT suite during their form times. Now, during form time, their form tutor will take them through a range of different activities, which gives them a little bit of an understanding about different areas of Unifrog and what they can use. So what they could do is after their week of um, session, they could then come home and sort of discuss with you what they've learned, maybe log in and you can sit with them and go through some of the features that are on there. So I'm just going to share my screen with you now. So you'll be able to see um, what the pupils can see. So this is a standard login. OK, and as you scroll your way down, you'll see these kind of key areas that are highlighted. Now, there's a couple of quizzes that they can have a go at doing, and we recommend that they probably do them every year because their interests are going to change over time. So something that they're interested in year seven, that might not be the same case by the, by the time they're in year 11. So don't let them feel that they, they've done it once and then that means that they don't have to do it again. They can do that as many times as they like. Um, another key area is this careers library. So if they go into the careers library um, and they know uh, a particular area that they're interested in. So for example, they might be interested in becoming a doctor. If they search for that keyword, they can find out about the different careers within that sector. And if they find something that they're particularly interested in, it's got this little heart symbol and they can just simply favorite it. And when they favorite it, it means that it's pinned to the top. And if they want to come back and look at it at any point, they can. Uh, another key area that they can use is the subject library. So say, for example, they don't know what career they want to go into, but they do know a particular subject that they like. So, for example, um, it could be computers, it could be business. Um, they can simply click on the link and it will give them some ideas of jobs within that sector, or that subject that they like. And then again, they can watch some of the videos, go through the links, and it just kind of gets them to start thinking about what they could possibly do, because this is all going to help when it comes to things like making their options um, in year nine or thinking about their options when they get to year 11. They could also um, use the uh, uh, know-how library. This is a really good resource. They might find it better the further up the school they get, um, but it's got things like how to write a really good CV, how to do a covering letter. You know, if they're thinking about a particular subject, could they think about getting some work experience sectors that they could go into? So it might be worth just spending a little bit of time going through and seeing what's on offer. Um, and again, it's got that little favorite option so they can make sure that it's at the top and they can always go back to it should they wish to. Um, there are MOOCs which they can make use of. And again, this might be a bit more helpful further up the school, but basically what it is, it's an option for them to look in a particular area they're interested. So say for example, biology. When they select it, what it will do, so it's on a bit of a go slow. Um, it will give them an idea of some courses that they could go on to. Now, most of the courses, a, a real significant a number of them, are free. So the kids can find something that they're interested, work through, and it's usually like a sort of hour seminar every week, et cetera. And it gives them a little taster. So if they're thinking about they want to do a certain subject at university, for example, they could go on and have a little look and it would help them to kind of see whether or not they would be interested to take that further. Now, some of them are certificated. They might have to do a small payment for the certification. They don't necessarily need it because what they could use is the information from that to help with them writing, say, for example, applications uh, for university or for other jobs uh, in a similar sector. Um, another one is a webinars. Now, this is a really good resource that they could use um, and parents at home. So if they've got a particular interest in something, so for example, this one would be geography, they can actually join live webinars, which gives them sort of like a little bit of information about what that subject is. But also there are past ones. So if there's not one in a particular subject that they wanted, they might find if they go back, they can again watch something and it will give them more information about it. Um, and then the final section I was going to take you through is this um, read, watch and listen. And it kind of gives them like ideas of podcasts so they can kind of watch and find out a little bit more about the day in the life of a particular 
career sector or um, a particular job, for example. So those are some of the resources that they can use within Unifrog. And as they complete them, you'll find that, that it gives them um, more of the section will be highlighted. Now, it's a fantastic resource. It's not the only thing that we use within school, but if it's something that you want to use with them at home, we would highly recommend it. Um, also, when they have interactions in school, so say, for example, we have a guest speaker in or they have an employer challenge that takes place or maybe they take part in an event in school like the empowering women day we will log these interactions so you'll be able to see sort of extra things that they get access to within school outside of our unifrog rotor which is a really good way to kind of see what their interests are and see you know if there's a particular pathway that's showing that there would be a good way to follow um, also within the career sector, we offer them a session with Sylvia Wood, who's our careers advisor. So they'll get one of those in Key Stage 4, and they'll also get one of those in, in Key Stage 5. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Um, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for listening. I'm just going to pass you back to Miss Blackwell. Okay, thank you so much for that, Lindsay. I really, really, really appreciate that. And I know from my viewpoint as head of year eight, um, the feedback from a lot of the year eight students has been incredible from the Unifrog programme. And a lot of them have been coming and asking for further careers, appointments and advice, which is really great to see them inspired to be thinking about their future prospects from such an early age. So thank you for your work on that. Um, we're now going to pass over to Rachel Hardin as our assistant head teacher, and she's going to tell you more about her role in the school. So over to you, Rachel. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Rachel Harding, and I'm, as, as Steph said, I'm assistant head teacher with responsibility for year eight. Um, I'm also the safeguarding lead. So my role in school is to promote safeguarding, to train staff and students about safeguarding, and also to deal with welfare concerns with, with, with my team of safeguarding pastoral staff. Um, safeguarding is promoted through our refreshed um, PSHE curriculum, which you can find on the website, and also through our assembly programme and work that we do with students. Um, we, we, we tackle all sorts of issues that are obviously important, things like anti-bullying, um, things that you may have seen in the media about around sexual harm and consent are part of the programme of, 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 of study that we, we do, and obviously spend a lot more time looking at that. Um, over the next few, few weeks as well. You will have seen in the news, the media all about mental health. And I'm really proud of the provision we've got here at Crystalton High School. Um, we've got pastoral staff who can support students around that. And we, we have a partnership with, with CAMS, which we, you know, we work very closely with. And also we have a, a school counsellor. So you know, where there are kind of issues around that, we can um, support our young people in a, in a really positive way. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you, all of you, for your lovely comments that you've made tonight. We haven't had um, a huge amount of questions at the moment anyway, um, so I'm just going to um, pass this question back, actually, if that's OK, to, to Lindsay. So the question, the question is just about um, Unifrog and the expectation around Year 7 and 8 using it. Should they be using it um, regularly at the moment, Lindsay? Um, it's entirely up to them, to be honest. Um, they're definitely obviously going to get it on the rotor. So within school, they'll get a week um, period, sort of every eight to 10 weeks. So we will be monitoring it within school. But actually, a lot of times when I, you know, log in at home to kind of, because um, I get a lot of the data side to see who's been logging in, what's been favorited, those kind of things. The kids are actually logging in all the time without being prompted to. So at this stage, it's year seven, eight, I'd probably just be expecting them to just be getting familiar with using the platform. I think when they get into key stage four and five, it's really important to maybe setting some time aside to sit with them and to go through it, especially when it comes to kind of making options post 16, post 18. So at this stage, you know, it can be a bit of a fun. You, you might want to go on and do the quiz, uh, you know, alongside them. They might get to see your what you comes out. Does it match the job that you've picked? Does it match your interest? So more than anything, it could just be a bit of a fun uh, session between you and your child. Uh, but we're definitely not sort of saying, you know, saying it as homework or anything like that. We just kind of want them to be familiar and confident with using it at this stage. OK, thank, thanks, Lindsay. Um, sorry, I've just got another question just popped up. Um, 
So the question is, how can we get hold of the syllabus for subjects and which GCSE exam boards will they be doing? Um, so if you if you have a look on our website, um, the, all the subject, the curriculum um, outline is, is all on the website. And obviously there's information cur about current year seven and eight on, on, on the, um, the curriculum book. Okay, I'm just going to, um, Steph, I think it'd be best if I just pass over to, to you now so that, that, you can, um, that you can introduce Adrian because there's a few more questions coming through. So I think we might just sort of have a look at those and then I'll, uh, I'll speak to you again in, in a minute if that's okay. Okay, thank you very much, Rachel. I really appreciate that. So Rachel, I'll just start having a look at some of the questions that are coming in. So please feel free to ask anything that you'd like to ask. And whilst Rachel is doing that, um, we will hand over to another one of our assistant heads, um, Mr. Adrian Francis, who is gonna talk more about. So my role is assistant head teacher, uh, student wellbeing and developments. And that covers quite a number of things, really. I do work very closely with uh, Jen Monaghan in terms of primary transition and work with year seven students. You might recognize me from uh, some of the videos that we posted on the school website as a replacement for the face-to-face -face meetings that we haven't been able to have over the last 18 months. Um, so that, that's one part of the role, but I would really like to share with you our plans for developing links with parents and carers over the year ahead. If you have a child in year seven, uh, I hope you've taken the opportunity to have an online appointment with their form tutor this afternoon and uh, find that helpful. Um, we do have a full year seven parents evening with subject teachers, which is scheduled for Tuesday, the 29th of March from 4 p.m. If you have a child in year eight, um, you will hopefully be pleased to know that we've scheduled our subject parents evening for Tuesday the 30th of November, which is just five weeks away. So um, warn your child. Um, obviously, we weren't able to have um, subject parents' evenings last year. Uh, when the current year eight were in year seven, they were taught in uh, year group bubbles. They were in the same room all, all the time. They had a smaller number of teachers and in fact some teachers taught all 224 students in the year group which meant sadly we couldn't run the face-to-face -face parents evenings in the normal way but uh, yeah that's coming up very soon Tuesday the 30th of November for uh, current year eight students. Uh, this year we're closer to normality. We hope that the parents' evenings will be able to be face-to-face, -face, um, but we are following the advice from Public Health England, so they may need to be on online remote uh, evenings, but we will let you know as soon as we can on that. So moving forward, um, we are really keen for, to know from you what the best way is to get your feedback about your child's education. What's the best way you can submit questions put forward your ideas, express your opinions and so on. And obviously this webinar is just one small step in that whole process. One of the questions was whether or not we would foresee any uh, trips in the future. And obviously that is completely dependent on COVID. Um, the moment that we are allowed to do that, um, yes, we will be looking at those different areas. Um, it's not like a, there'll be never any school trips again in the future. It's just obviously it was following the advice and guidance that have come to us from um, Department of Education. So um, as soon as we know more, um, we will let you know those different areas. It's just what I wanted to say, quick way to answer it live for everybody there. Um, and if you are answer, asking any questions at the moment, um, our specialists in numeracy and um, literacy and careers are all typing some of the answers, especially if it's specific to their field. Um, so do keep an eye on the Q&A um, and people are responding in that way as well um, so I just thought I'd pass that one over there we're currently on 84% of the poll filled in um, so nearly there um, I'll hand back over to you Mr Francis right thank you the idea that we do have which we're very keen to get going with is uh, setting up a parents forum which is where we invite parents into school um, hopefully something which is fairly informal whether it's a coffee morning or something like that we're just where you've got the opportunity to come in and talk face to face with uh, members of staff and uh, express your opinions ask questions in that particular way but you may have some ideas for other formats other sorts of uh, opportunities that you would welcome and again we would really like to know um, what that might be I spotted that a couple of people have um, asked about 
um, cash reports, starting points, things like that. Um, and it's almost like you've read our minds. We've already discussed um, that as those reports come out, we should either offer an event like this, a webinar, or potentially a, a catch up in school, um, but some sort of format to help you understand, understand the reports and answer any questions that you may have around that. Um, because we understand that's really important to you. You obviously want to know how well your, your child is doing within our school. Uh, so that's an area that we've already thought about. Um, and there was another one as well that, that caught my eye. Um, one, one of you eager parents asking us about phones in schools. Um, and I'm sure Mr. Francis will happily agree with me that that would be one of the probably the first things that will um, be discussed at a parent forum, as it's always quite a contentious issue. And every school across uh, the whole country has a different mobile phone policy. Um, so we were quite eager to hear thoughts and feelings on that. So thank you for raising it. And we will look at it as um, one of our parent forums. Thank you. I'll hand back to Mr. Francis then. Yes, thank you for that. Um, so, of course, the other thing we would like to know is, is, is what sort of things would you like covered? So if we, have, if we have a parental forum, if we have another webinar such as this, uh, what, what sorts of areas would be useful to be covered and, and would you most value? Um, all right, that is just about it from me. So thank you very much for your feedback. Um, we will be in touch again soon um, to move forward with the whole idea of parent power. And I'm um, going to hand, hand back to Steph, and I think it's just a final word now from Sarah, isn't it? Thank you, Mr. Francis. Yes, it is. It's uh, me handing back to Ms. Chesworth in a second. Just before I do so, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody that has joined us this evening. And also thank you so much for all of your lovely comments. Um, there's been a couple of points in the questions where people have already fed back how useful they found the evening. Um, so thank you very much for that. And um, thank you for your patience with the few technical glitches we've had. And I will hand you over to Ms. Chesworth now uh, for our final words. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Um, so we really hope that this webinar, the first we hope of many, has helped you to see what an important role you play and how much we value that in you supporting us as a school. Uh, the level of support we need from you is not about you being subject ex experts, but is about discussing learning with your children and encouraging them to be proactive and not give up when they find things difficult. Um, now, when I came up with the idea of this webinar, um, everyone thought I was a little bit crazy, uh, so I do need to thank a couple of people, um, all of the dedicated staff who've been here this evening, but in particular, um, Steph, who's been our compare this evening, but also has been the organisation behind the scenes, and also to our technical wizard, who you haven't seen this evening, but has been running between the rooms, helping us with our various glitches, which is John Blundell, so, so a big thank you to them in particular. Also, we need to say thank you very much to you for giving up your time this evening. It's amazing that over 130 parents have joined us this evening with the added bonus that you didn't have to fight for a car parking space. So there are some advantages to COVID and having to do things in a remote way. We have seriously missed being able to collaborate with you more due to COVID over the last few years. If you're in year eight, we're you know sorry that, that last year uh, we've not been able to have you in and hopefully this is the start of us rebuilding those relationships with you and in developing great learning habits for the children who come to our school. We look forward to working with you at future events and we'd just like to say thank you very much and have a lovely evening. <laughs>